but our first question tonight comes from Liberal Hippie on Instagram, who asks, Hey, Adam, just a quick question. Do you consider yourself a constitutionalist? If so, how do you plan on upholding the individual liberties declared by the Bill of Rights? Furthermore, do you think it's possible to have a constitutional approach of dissolving the federal government when the Constitution specifically gives it its powers? So, do I consider myself a constitutionalist? Let me just examine that word for a second. A constitution is a document uh, created by people who want to govern an area, that is to impose their will on it through force and violence somehow, and they are writing down a, a document uh, that gives them powers to do things that they wouldn't have without that document, and really what they're doing is, is just creating an excuse to violate the rights of individuals. So in that sense, no, absolutely. I am not a constitutionalist because I'm an ethical person. I, I don't believe that you can have this myth of a social contract and force it on people and say, well, you never signed this contract, but there's a social contract here and some other people signed it on your behalf. No, it's, it's simply unethical. I mean, it'd be like me buying a car for my own use in your name and saying, well, no, your name is here on, on the lease, so you're gonna have to or on, you know, on, on, on the payments, you're going to have to, on the loan, you're going to have to make these payments because I, I signed this contract for you. No, you wouldn't let someone do that. Why would you let someone do that with everything even more important than that? Of course not. An ethical person cannot be a constitutionalist unless what that constitution is laying out is something for a voluntary institution. So uh, nonprofit constitution, you know, um, you know, perhaps a, a city-state constitution where people actually opt in by entering a specific geographic area, not by just having to be born within the borders of this giant territorial monopoly. Perhaps, yes. So, since you bring it up, liberal hippie, excuse me, I got the name wrong. It's Lippy Hibberal. If so, how do you plan on upholding the individual liberties declared by the Bill of Rights? Well, that's an interesting wording that you impose on this here. Uh, lippy, because the liberties declared by the Bill of Rights would suggest that you have at least a somewhat of a, a reasonable understanding here that what we're talking about are rights that are inherent to your humanity, or even as the Declaration would say, from our Creator. And the Bill of Rights is really a, a bad excuse tacked onto the Constitution that says, oh, give us all these powers to tax, to have a military, to set monetary policy, to enforce intellectual property, uh, to, to maintain slavery even in the original Constitution where the first Bill of Rights appeared. Hey, but, but we won't do any of these evil things. We won't, we won't uh, interfere with your right to free speech or, or to keep and bear. Like, and, uh, we won't interfere with your, your right to protection from unreasonable search and seizure. What, what would a reasonable search and seizure be? There isn't one. No, because the only reasonable one is, is one, I guess, which, which you consent to. So the idea of protecting liberties as, as declared by the Bill of Rights, no, I, I think even that is buying into the, the status paradigm of constitutionalism. When in reality, it should be, you know, how, how do we just defend the rights of individuals as a whole? How do we ensure a voluntary society? How do we get rid of every institutionalized mechanism of violence in the world, not uphold the individual liberties declared by the Bill of Rights? Furthermore, do you think it's possible to have a constitutional approach to dissolving the federal government when the Constitution specifically gives it its powers? Hypothetically, hypothetically, yes, there is the possibility of a convention of the states but what that would do is leave the power in the hands of the same people who pull the strings today. So no, in terms of being realistically possible, it is hypothetically possible, but no, we are much more likely, it is much more realistic and pragmatic to do what I am suggesting, to turn the presidential election into a referendum on whether or not the federal government should be allowed to exist at all so that when enough of the American people realize that we'd be better off without the federal government, that we don't have to be united under one government to be united in American values, that we will embrace a solution as big as the problem 
and end up with a peaceful, orderly, responsible transition to a voluntary society. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.